What's up dudes, it's Chad here at Barry Big Plums Fishing. It's about the middle of May. I'm back here at Herman Zoo at Brick Farm Trout Fishery. Guess what I'm doing guys? I'm doing a little bit of buzzer fishing today. Um, I've fallen in love with this tactic here, especially at Brick Farm. It's a lot of fun, very, very effective. I have dug out da, 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 the old school without catching the tree. Shakespeare, Sigma and a half foot seven weight fly rod. I did a video called a Tackle Tarts Test and Review about a year ago. I've had quite a few views on it. Um, and this is my recommendation for sort of someone starting out in the sport. You can get a whole setup for about uh, you know, 70 pounds, omni fly line, um, a reasonable fly reel and a uh, pretty versatile fly rod. And for such a cheap rod, I've caught carp on this up to, you know, sort of eight pound, plenty of fish, you know, and it's, it's handy just having it in the back of your car. Um, for all eventualities, you know, nine and a half foot seven way you can do just about everything. Um, it's quite windy here, guys, which is great for the buzzer fishing, that's fine. Uh, nothing too complicated as far as my setup goes. I've got a free buzzer setup, I'm going to show you now uh, what I've got on my line. Okay, guys, here we have an absolutely gorgeous size 10 buzzer. It's got a plastic bead on its head and it's got some stripy segmentation there. I think that's going to be absolutely awesome. Moving up, we've gone down to a size 12 here. This is a green buzzer. It's got a little bit of a green hot spot on it there, a bit of UV flash. Standard sort of buzzer I go for the middle dropper. And what seems to always be the star of the show, it's a size 14 um, quill buzzer with the red cheek hot spot for my top dropper. And uh, I'm basically just going to fire that out and drift it in the wind. And see what happens. oh yeah and uh just a disclaimer guys it was my anniversary yesterday i went out for a meal with my wife i had quite a few ciders last night so i am feeling a little bit ropey i'm not gonna deny that fact i'm a little bit sluggish this morning so i'm glad to be out in the air hopefully my head will clear um as time progresses but i've got my morrison's pond water there it's a kiwi fruit and lime it looks like it should come out the bottom of a louisiana swamp it's very tasty fruit juice and i think that's going to sort me right out let's go and put these buzzers in the water and see if we can catch right here we go guys up on stag lake As you can see the wind is coming this way so really i want to be drifting my buzzers into the wind you can see there's loads of little midges there hatching they're literally oh, actually no are they midges or are they uh those little fluffy flower things that when the wind catches them. No, no, I'm lying. They're not midges yet. They're flower things. Right. This is going to be pretty bread and butter stuff, guys. It's definitely got a, quite a breeze going on there. So I'm probably going to have to mend my line quite a bit to get a little bit of depth with these buzzers. Let's see, Sigma, it's got some nice bright line with it, it's a little bit of memory in the coils where I haven't um, used it in a while, but yeah, it's just a little bit mending that. Definitely feeling the cider today, guys. Whew. Everyone can appreciate when you wake up in the morning and you just get that feeling in your stomach, that sick feeling in the pit of your stomach and in your head, and you just think, oh, I drank yesterday. I had a few drinks last night. <laughs> I think everyone's been there as an adult. Right, put a little mend in there. And see. Would like a bit of a further cast than I just had, but this is just getting the line out of there. I mean, the Sigma's not going to be a, a distance casting rod, it's a good sort of all around starting tool. But yeah, let's just so while I just put in a little bit of line, let it go to say. That bead head, I think, really should pull those flies under. Do you know what? I'm, I am going to get a little bit further this. That's 
Better. Little mint. That's a nice, that's a reasonable cast. So yeah, that's what that mend I've already put in down there guys, that's already got a bow in it, so that would be dragging my team of flies along. So these uh, buzzer takes really are something else. The horrendous thing about it is obviously trying to record them, you just never know something that's going to grab grab your flies, so you just have to try and be a bit selective with the filming. There we go. Obviously, my uh, being a floating line, that's literally just going to drag round with the surface tension on, on the water with the wind blowing through. But, you know, this this style of fishing, this buzzer fishing is not as effective when it's dead calm. You do need a little bit. There we go. Oh, and here you go. See that, guys? That's exactly what I was talking about. Line just peels off the water. Exactly what I was talking about, dudes. Oh, mate. Hehe. <laughs> <laughs> I love me a bit of buzzer fishing, dudes. A technique I have fallen in love with over the past few weeks. Absolutely. I think that's the middle dropper there, guys, which is the one with the green hotspot on it. Just so you, you think nothing's happening, and suddenly a line just absolutely torpedoes off. You know, the only other thing I can really compare it to is lure fishing in the winter you know when you get your positive takes I think he's ready but when they're feeding naturally it does seem oh I like go slack there don't do that there we go <clears throat> nice nice little rainbow there dudes Nice little rainbow and buzzer. In the wind, you are going to get lying around your feet and stuff like that. But it's just one of those things. I find just picking it up off the water like I'm doing now and just doing the one back cast is one of my tactics I use to beat the wind. If, if you're going swish, 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 backs and forwards, I find you can... Um, you know, I end up in all sorts of a pickle. I just pick up my line once, and drop it once and drop it. I think it does tend to have some wind beating capabilities. So with these buzzers, although you're not animating them, the water is animating them just enough for you. And you just have to have confidence that when they're in the water, they are fishing. They are presenting to, to fish, you know. Um, as you saw in that last take, if you get a take on this, you will know it. Your line will t torpedo off. It's not, they are not subtle takes generally on buzzers. Not in my experience anyway. And um, you'll find obviously you've got three, certainly with three buzzers on there, your tip of your fly line will sink. That's fine. Um, you can always just give it a little two feet lift. Retrieve some line. But yeah, you will expect your fly line to sink. Bottom line is even if it sank, I will see movement in the stuff there anyway. Especially in, at this time of year when they're confidently feeding. See, now that you've got a bow in that line, the current is animating my buzzers, which is fine. But it does mean that they're moving. 
because obviously bear in mind that water will be dragging on that floating line so if you want to get a bit more depth just do a mend so you see there all the time the, the water's got to move that D I've created there back into a bow so it's letting my buzzers sink that's how you get depth when you're straight line nymphing so that will soon be bowed again that's going going that way going that way going that way and that just means my buzzers are getting that little bit more depth that old man, there you go it's bowed back round now but it just means my buzzers have gone that little bit deeper well I've I've cast out here a lot and searched this water in front of me so I am going to move guys let's try another area out and see if we can reduce another fish or two right normally most anglers when they turn up this is the first swim they would go to because the wind's on their back on a windy day and they're able to cast but my theory is the food's all been blown down that end so they wouldn't be down here but I have caught the odd fish with the wind on my back. Sometimes you can put a long cast out and that makes it possible to get the fish, but it certainly is a little bit easier with the wind on your back. <laughs> so the only thing about this setup, guys, is when you're used to a silky smooth hardy reel and you get a a ratchety squawky reel cheaper reel is a little bit of a bit of a bummer right let's put one out there as long as they're able to handle a fish if when i put a fish on the reel that's all that really matters to me right let's see what we got got the wind on your back you can really buffer that cast and get that extra distance let's see what we got here that's a heck of a ripple on this water today, dude. Oh, do you see that? Did you see that? Ho, 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 ho. That was a line ripper. That was a line ripper, literally. That was awesome. And they're the sort of takes I was talking about. I think that's a top size 14. Oh, cool back buzzer. Very nice. Very nice, friends. That was a line ripper. Again, I think the trick is just getting right in the middle where it's deep. That's where the majority of the fish hang out. For a 70 pound outfit, you really can't grumble at the Shakespeare Sigma. I didn't even pay that. I think I paid 48 for it last year. Um, but due to COVID, the price and everything has absolutely skyrocketed. I don't know if you've picked up on that. Ah, oh, look at the state of my my uh, multiple flies. That's the only, oh, that's the only problem, guys. I'm gonna have to retile my flies off after this. God, he's going well. Yeah, my whole rig is completely tangled. So I can see the dropper mixed in with the, with the point fly. And it, oh, mate. Ooh, there we go. It's a lovely, lovely perky rainbow on the uh, top dropper there, guys, you see? Just in the scissors. Awesome. I think, guys, they might be more hens. I mean, someone will correct me if I'm wrong. One of the uh, weakest aspects of me is I'm not particularly familiar with what all the birds are, but I believe they're more hens. You've got a mother there and a couple of chicks. I've seen them at lakes many a time. Come in, Mum. Cute little fluff balls. Right, King of Tangles was cut, and my team of buzzers has been retied. 
So again, dealing with the wind, up once, down once. So, uh, <laughs> a line caught in that hook on the platform there. That was a great um, example of buzzer tape there guys. It really, really shot off. That was a, a lovely take on camera. I would like a little bit more distance here actually, but I'm just gonna let it fish just for an extra few, uh, just for an extra minute. Um, sadly, I hadn't actually come prepared for uh, the coldness that today brings with the wind and the rain, um, because my BBC weather app actually said that it was gonna be uh, fine to about four o'clock this afternoon. So I should know that, not to rely on the BBC weather app. But uh, as far as months go in May, if you think this time last year, guys, it was a heat wave through May, wasn't it? Because everyone was at the beach and everyone was getting the hump because uh, people were ignoring COVID restrictions going to the beach. Um, this year has been different. We've had significant rainfall and it's been bleeding cold for this time of year, not going to lie. But it has helped the fishing. Well, I am going to put this a long one out. Let's do a really long cast, but up and out. Just get the trajectory going. A little bit longer. There you go, into the ripple. A little pull to make sure straighten my flies out. Yeah, it's been a funny old May this year, guys. Obviously, um, if you could have looked forward two years <laughs> in uh, 2019, I just couldn't imagine being locked down for the best part of the year. Um, it's been a crazy, crazy uh, turn of events, COVID-19. Crazy turn of events. Let's give that one a little pull. Uh, had my first jab a few days ago. I felt a little bit ill for a couple of days, but that's the first one done. So I'm 38 now, just about to be 39 in July. So I've literally just uh, been offered my jab, had the visor one. Yeah, I certainly felt a bit ropey for a couple of days, but it's definitely better than having COVID. Make no mistake about it. It's gone calm in the middle there, so what I'm gonna do is just draw in about two feet of line just to draw my flies up. So when I had that take, I was about an extra 20, 10, 20 feet out. 10 feet out, I'd say. That was quite a spirited little rainbow, that was. But, you know, this is certainly going to be the way I now fish Brick Farm. It is my small still water buzzer water. <laughs> Uh, quite a big title that isn't it but um, yeah it's going to be the small still water where I practice my buzzer fishing for when I go to bigger venues so it certainly provides good sport so I suppose it's when I'm straight line buzzering like this to say and I don't really understand what people's beef with indicators are because it's not really that different I'm just using the line as an indicator and drifting them around um, I think the takes, for, for me personally, um, I do have indicators in my pocket now, uh, which I could use, but I think the takes are more fun on the straight line buzzering because, you know, it rips the line out of your hand and you see it shoot off, whereas fishing an indicator, you just wait for the indicator to go underneath. I've caught plenty of fishing indicators over the years, guys, so I'd never knock them. I mean, it's course fishermen too, so, you know, people seem very interested in how everyone else is fishing, you know what's right, what's not right. If, if, if a water, let me try and get a long cast out, allows indicators, then fill your boots. And I've been fishing on some days where the only people who can catch on that particular day are people using indicators. Whew.
Lovely. I think that's on that red quill buzzer again. Beautiful. Have a stunning rainbow. <laughs> Alright then dude, successful day so far. Free trout, pretty quick succession on buzzer. One thing I want to talk to you about is fluorocarbon. Um, through the winter you might find me using like fully meal and some cheaper brands, but I must admit I did splash out on this uh, Grand Max, the old Seagar Grand Max bloody expensive fluorocarbon um like 23 24 pound for 100 yards but it is so so much thinner than a lot of the other brands on the market i've um, been fishing some tough days in the summer with my friend chris you saw him last week in the last video um and he's had some expensive fluorocarbon in, in the harder months with small flies and he's outfished me every single time spending that bit more on fluorocarbon um let us know what you think in the comments guys you know i i quite happy to use the thicker stuff in the winter when you're stripping lures I don't think they can really see it because it's moving so quickly through the water but in the summer especially fishing static I, I am a great believer in just spending a little bit extra on fluorocarbon I do think it produces more fish just an interesting thought guys um when my wallet cried when I uh, hit this purchase on eBay I just thought it's going to produce more fish probably so it's worth it but I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are you know what brand do you fish? Do you think, what the hell with it, I can get some uh, fully meal for seven quid? Or do you think that you, you know, it's worth spending that bit extra for the odd extra fish here and there? Let us know. I think I'm gonna be that little bit further out, to be honest, guys. I've got a little bit more line by my feet. Yeah, I am gonna put one further out. Try not to overload the rod. wind beside me completely naffed that up could not have naffed that up anymore no, because the wind's changed direction now goody gum drops right oh, I don't think that's actually me further than I was last time never mind Buzzer guys. It's that little black comment red again. fish guys he's in yeah kindle flies red buzzer again right there you go guys that's four fish right awesome. then dude that's four fish on buzzers four rainbows there on the shakespeare sigma just great fun um really really enjoy the buzzer fishing dudes it's uh, really clicked for me and i'm just having a great time doing it unfortunately the weather's uh, still not holding out we've had insane amounts of rain through may this year but uh, just great to be out in the bank and catching fish i hope you enjoyed the video guys as always it's great to have a gopro and be bringing you this content again take it easy man